Hello everybody, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming, and in this RPG Maker MV tutorial, we're going to cover two things. The first thing is going to be in how to initialize your variables and why you would want to initialize and declare your variables. And the second part is going to cover a special request from Apico Onion or App Oh, a piece of onion. <laughs> a piece of onion. Okay. So, um how you would declare your variables is just basically at the beginning of the game the easiest way uh, is to do a parallel process with a switch you only have to initialize them one time and then if you use them uh, if you call on them from another outside source like a plugin or a script or a damage formula then they'll work uh, appropriately the first thing I'm gonna do is show you how they work if you do not declare your variables and initialize them so I'm gonna show you a skill uh, I have several that uh, that di that use the variables in their damage formula. For example, um, wildfire here will use a variable. Um, I'm going to show you inpay, which is uh, like a melee attack skill. So we're calling on variable 10 here. So basically in the damage formula it's saying take the variable that's in the 10th position, multiply that number by 3, add the attacker's attack by 3, and the defender's defense by, uh, and then subtract the defender's defense times 2. So that's going to calculate damage. So this is a, a skill that uh, when I use, it should do damage. But if I don't declare my variables, you're going to see what happens. It doesn't actually crash, but it creates weird bugs. So here we have inpay, and it's calling on the 10th the variable, Bushido skill. And it's going to do zero damage if you don't have your variables declared. See, we, hit a, we had a two strike attack that did zero damage. So how you can declare your variables, you can, uh, how I normally do it right here it, for the testing thing is I just control variables in a, tre in a treasure chest, but that's not ideal for, uh, for an actual game because there's no guarantee that the player is going to find that treasure chest and open it. So what you really want to do is create a new event, set it to parallel process or even auto run, and then you're going to right click and ins insert new control variables and then you're gonna go to the variable that you're, you know you're, go you're gonna have to call on in a skill in this case it's variable 10 Bushido skill and uh, you're gonna set that to zero and that's all you have to do or set it to whatever number you prefer uh, zero would be like the starting number and then all we're going to do is uh, control self switch turn self switch A on create a new page that requires self si switch A so at the very beginning of the game, whatever map they start on, you're going to have this hidden uh, event with no image or anything. And uh, you don't have to have anything checked right here. Um, set it below characters and set it to a parallel process. Uh, control variables for the variables you need. And then set a self switch A, new event page, and call on that self switch, self -switch page. Uh, also, when you do this one, you want to have this one below characters that way it doesn't act as a collision uh, and that's pretty much it now I'll show you that this uh, parallel process event is gonna run right off the bat so it already ran and now the uh, Bushido the tenth variable has been declared so now when we call on that variable and the damage formula it should work fine so let's test that NP should do damage and it does so there you go. So that's the reason why you'd want to declare your variables. It's real simple how you would do that just on the, the map that the player starts on, create a parallel process. Okay, the second part of this video is going to answer a question from a piece of onion. He or she says, is it possible to make a skill cost anything other than MP or TP? For example, if I wanted a skill to deal damage in exchange for a portion of the character's health, or if I wanted to add a bullet system where a certain skill costed a certain type of bullet instead of MP or TP. So the first part of that, you can. The second part, you will be able to eventually. Uh, Yanfly already said that uh, they're going to be posting, uh, publishing a, a plugin that lets you use items to, uh, to, as a requirement for a skill. An example, uh, you would have to make or buy bullets in order to use this gun skill. Um, for the first part, it's already uh, able. You can use your HP to do damage, but you will need a plugin. So you're going to get the skill core, but in order for the skill core to work, you're going to need the core engine for Yanfly engine. 
So go to Yanfly's website. I'm going to bring it over here real quick. Also, the links are going to be in the description below. So uh, yanfly.mo slash news. Um, I'll put the links below. And you can find all of Yanfly's plugins there. Download the core engine and the skill core. Once you have the skill core, um, you can go to the help file and see all the note tags. And you can see you can use HP cost or HP percentage cost. But I've already done all this. So I'm going to show you a, a couple of the skills that I've made that require... Uh, HP cost. So this is a skill called Blood Mend, and it's going to use your own HP to revive a fallen, uh, fallen party member. So to do that, we're just uh, removing state and adding a little bit of HP at the cost of more HP than you're going to be restoring. Uh, and you don't put any MP or TP cost. The only thing you're going to do is use note tags. So you're going to use these note tags, bracket, HP cost, colon, space, and then the percentage of HP you would like it to cost, or and or uh, HP cost colon space the the exact fixed amount the number you want to use so in this case it's gonna take 25 percent of the maximum HP plus a hundred in order to cast blood mend I'll show you one more real quick it's a skill called sacrifice and what it's doing is it's spending your HP in order to drain MP from your enemy so once again we set everything how we like it the name the description the icon we don't give it any MP cost any TP cost we're going to call this one a certain hit and give it any animation you like or any message you like. Uh, in this case, it's MP Drain. If you wanted it to deal damage, you would just have HP damage. So, and it'll work exactly the same. And whatever element you like, variance, critical, it's up to you. Give it a simple damage formula and then set the cost for it in the note tags. In this case, it's HP cost 300 plus a set 10% uh, of maximum. And it'll add it up and tell you the number. And this number will fluctuate. So, let's have a look at those skills. So I have an event here on this page that's going to kill one of the party members. Poor guy. Okay, sets has fallen. All right, so now we have a, a, a fallen party member. We're going to use uh, Mia's blood mend to, to take her HP to, to bring sets back to life. So look at Mia's HP as I use this. There we go. No MP was consumed. She didn't even have any TP, but it used uh, the HP in order to re resurrect uh, sets. And for, uh, for the cost, you can see that it's using a red uh, text for the, for the HP. Green uh, text will specify TP, and blue text will specify MP. The skill core uh, adds a lot of unique functionality to the, to the game, RPG Maker MV. So this number 728 will change depending on how much HP uh, Mia actually has. So that's uh, one way to do it. That's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up, like, favorite, share, subscribe if you did. <clears throat> Remember to check out Yanfly's uh, website for those plugins. And uh, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.